This is the FL Sun T1 Pro, the fastest, largest, and generally just most insane 3D printer I've ever gotten my hands on. But it's also been one of the most frustrating. It's incredibly loud, features a lot of poor design choices, and also the nozzle fell out 47 hours into a 48 hour print, but that might have been my fault, we'll get into that later. Uh, anyway, you might know FL Sun from their very intense S1 3D printer, but this one is a smaller sister that's basically just been downgraded to be more budget friendly, coming in at about a third of the cost now. But like the S1, assembly is required. Because this is a Delta style 3D printer, it means the printer is a triangular prism, but the build plate is a circle, meaning that the build volume is a cylinder and measured with a radius and a height, rather than X, Y, and Z dimensions like you're probably used to. And another thing you might have noticed is that it's just really tall, so please forgive me for any awkward camera angles in this video. Anyway, after putting the top on and screwing the main body assembly together, it was time to attach the extruder, and this is where things started getting really fiddly. I had to screw in two of these tiny screws and two regular size screws on each side, so 12 total, then attach it to the three arms. And it was a pain, uh, the footage here is bad, but you can see me struggling against the spring to pull apart each arm so I could align the pins that connected them to the extruder if that makes sense. And also if I bumped it wrong, these little spaces that go over the pins would go flying off somewhere. Uh, so yeah, just a really fiddly step, I wish there was a better way to do this. But after that was done, thankfully the rest of the assembly was easy. Calibration completed. Yes. Then I loaded in some filament and started the 10 minute Benchy test, and oh boy, did it start moving really fast. And here it is, there's a bit of stringing, poor overhangs and some surface finish issues, but for a really fast 10 minute print, this is acceptable quality. Obviously, if you want a high quality final part, I'd definitely slow it down a bit, but for prototyping, I'd be very happy with the quality trade-off for going this fast. I also hooked up the app FL Sun World. Every 3D printer seems to have an app now and they're all basically identical so there's not really much I can say besides it works. I could control the machine and monitor the webcam fine. And speaking of the built-in webcam, this is what it looks like. This is one of my maker coins and again, it's fine. There's no real issues with the print. Oh, and I also used the recommended slicer, FL Sun Slicer in this case, for all the prints you see in this video with the default 0.2mm layer height settings, like I do for all my 3D printer videos. Anyway, moving on, I'm going to do a really hard print to really test this 3D printer. This is BQ's new PLA HR filament that they sent me to try out, and it seems like they formulated this specific filament just for 3D printing basketballs, so that's what we're going to print. However, when trying to load the filament, it seems like it got a bit jammed, but that's okay, it happens sometimes, it's a 3D printer. I couldn't get it to feed forward or unload the filament, so it was time for some disassembly to manually dislodge it. And luckily, a video guide is available, but unluckily, this is the worst designed extruder assembly I've ever come across, and you'll see why soon. Anyway, the first step was to remove the cable, the air duct, and then two screws with one on each side. The first screw is easy to get to, but the second one is impossible to remove with the included hex key. The the trick is to get one that has a tip like this, so that you can unscrew it from an angle without damaging the screw head. After that, there were six more screws on the underside, and I had to use my phone camera so I could actually see what I was doing here. Also, make sure you don't drop any screws, otherwise they'll fall into the void, and there's no way to get them out. The video then just says to remove the extruder assembly, but there's actually one more screw to take out that's not included in the disassembly video at all, so thank you to this user for pointing that out, and after that the extruder just lifted off. And of course, all the connectors are glued into place. They can't make it easy for me. So I had to snip off all the glue before I could then unplug everything, take out more screws and disconnect the hot end. Then after a few more screws, I found and removed the issue. 
I won't lie, this was a real pain. I've never had to undo something like 15 screws just to get at the extruder gears. It all just feels so poorly thought out. Uh, also, the fan screws don't actually screw in anywhere, they just get wedged between the heatsink fins, and also this black cover was really annoying to get all the parts back into. But I did manage to get it all back together okay. Uh, luckily, I had an exact M3 screw to replace the one that fell into the void. Anyway, after that ordeal, I loaded the filament again and started the 48 hour basketball print. And I'm not going to lie, at this point I felt like all the pain was worth it. This print was looking amazing. Until something started happening, the nozzle was colliding with the print and the overhangs were not looking good at all. But there was less than one hour left and I didn't have enough filament to start again. So I was hoping it would finish. It didn't have to look good. I stopped caring at this point. It just had to finish. And with less than half an hour to go, it was looking very mangled. I was starting to lose hope here and then the nozzle fell off. Uh, you can actually see the exact moment I realized here. I was hoping to screw the nozzle back in and continue the print, but it was too clogged up, so that was that, I cancelled the print. And here's what I've got. Now, I can't assume this was the printer's fault, maybe it was my settings in the slicer that caused the collisions, or maybe I accidentally loosened the nozzle when I was reassembling the extruder assembly. All I can really say is that I've never had this problem with any other 3D printer. But for the sake of this video, let's assume this was just a freak accident and nobody's fault. Uh, anyway, I'm going to try to fix the basketball later on in the video, but for now I removed the clog and reattached the nozzle off camera, but as I went to unload the filament I was greeted with text label. Uh, the extruder had reached 180 degrees and then stayed there for a few minutes without unloading, which is just a tiny bit concerning. This is the latest firmware by the way, the only thing I could do was turn the printer off and on again, which fixed the issue. Uh, this is a simple vase I printed in vase mode with multicolor PLA, and thankfully it came out well, I think the gradient is very satisfying. Before we continue with some more intense testing, just a quick thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. They've recently helped me manufacture some of my designs, like this aluminium mold that I've since used to recycle filament waste into these cute multi-tools, as well as this chrome-plated CNC car badge, and this clear resin 3D printed phone case. And the best part is that their online services are really easy to use. Just upload the 3D file, select the material and surface finish you want, then they do all the hard work and ship it out to you when it's done. If you're interested, check out the link in the description to save $5 on your first order. Cheers. Uh, anyway, let's do something more intense. I scaled up this Pikmin design to around 250%, loaded up a fresh roll of yellow PLA, and then started the print. The first few layers were looking good, so I went away, and then this happened. The filament runout detector had triggered because of this huge filament tangle. How did this happen? I think after the printer auto-leveled itself, it raised the extruder back up, which then pushed the filament off the spool, and as it went to print again, it obviously got tangled. Or it might have something to do with this whole thing. These clips aren't very good, they don't stay in position properly, they make the filament bend at sharp angles, and sometimes they just get pulled off from the filament being dragged through them. Anyway, I sorted out the tangle and then restarted the print, this time without the auto-leveling.
and it looks good from a distance, but up close there's some issues. Like the mouth area, I have no idea what happened here, there wasn't a mouth modelled, so I'm not sure what caused this, especially when every other flat surface came out fine. The overhangs were also bad, they were fully supported too, so I'm a bit surprised by just how bad they are. If you look past these issues though, the rest of it is a really good print actually, but the glaring issues mean that this print isn't acceptable quality to me. And I've got time for one final print, so I'm going to try to fix the basketball. Okay, so I was hoping I could melt these two parts together using my soldering iron, and it looked like it was working until I gave it a bounce and... Yeah, so instead I just used a heap of super glue and pressed it together. And here's what the final basketball looks like. The bottom side where the support's connected is a bit rough and so is the top side where I attempted my fix. But the rest of the ball, I won't lie, is very nice. But I think this will definitely be more of a display piece than a usable ball, but that's okay. Okay, so what are my overall thoughts about the FL Sun T1 Pro based on my first experiences with it? Firstly, it's incredibly loud. For context, a closed door and an entire kitchen is between me and the T1 Pro, yet it's louder than the X1C in my wardrobe. Secondly, this printer wasn't designed with easy disassembly in mind. There's so many screws just to access the extruder gears like you saw earlier, and they're different sizes and hidden where you can't see them. And finally, just all the bad design choices, the filament cable and fan routing is just bad, having inaccessible voids where screws can fall and never return is bad, the system crashing is bad, the auto leveling causing filament tangles is bad. Maybe with some tinkering I'm sure you can fix these issues and improve upon this 3D printer, but with my videos I test the out of the box experience with the stock configuration and the stock settings, and maybe you'll have a better experience with this machine than I did, but considering my experiences I was not impressed with the FL Sun T1 Pro.